I got a really good question on my Instagram asking, is it bad to have big TIG welds? Let's go over this one here. This is super important. Really great question. Short answer, yes. However, there are a few workarounds and things we need to know. What we're gonna do is take a look at a joint like this. This is called a fillet weld configuration. Basically with every welding configuration that we do, if it is for a professional setting or structural or anything like that, obviously when we're welding it, we wanna properly penetrate the joint. Inadequate penetration is obviously something we do not want. And in most professional settings, getting proper penetration is priority number one. Now in my days, I have taken multiple dozens of TIG welding tests in many different configurations over the years. So when it comes to this topic, I've spent a lot of time working on this one. Let's go over what I'm talking about here. Now when I'm TIG welding something, I obviously want it to look as awesome as possible. When I'm welding it, I want to have the best control. I want to maintain consistency so that everything I finish looks absolutely awesome. But it serves all the important factors of properly welding and penetrating a joint. Now when I'm welding, getting into to this area here. As I said, this is priority number one. But when I'm trying to achieve this, there is absolutely something that will be public enemy number one. And that very common problem is called overfilling. Essentially, the way that this can happen is adding too much filler material without focusing specifically on our heat input into the most crucial areas of the joint. Dog is barking, stop that. Running a fillet joint, we wanna make sure that everything is concentrated in this area here. So when running a fillet joint, we wanna make sure that we are focusing all of our heat input properly here. This is how we get adequate penetration. Now, when running a butt weld, same deal. We want to focus our heat input so we get adequate penetration to the other side. Outside corner joints, same thing. Focusing our heat input into the perfect sweet spot, we're gonna get consistent penetration and we're gonna make things look pretty awesome on the backside as well. Now, what is the reason that overfilling or excessive reinforcement is gonna stop us from getting adequate penetration? Let's take a look at this graphic right here. So what happens when we add excessive filler material is we're essentially gonna start to block our overall heat input into the most crucial area of a joint. Obviously, like we talked about, it is this area right here. Now, when we start to work with excessive filler material, this is gonna do one of two things. The first thing is it's obviously gonna add excessive reinforcement. This is gonna cause a small weld flaw on the edges. This can be called cold lap or lack of fusion, whatever, lots of terms for it. Essentially what this is though, is it's a lack of blending between the filler material and the base material right here. Essentially, this can cause all kinds of problems later on down the line, but this is exceptionally common when working with a butt weld or a fillet weld. So looking at this diagram here, obviously with our filler material standing up high in the center and not blending to the edges or the toes of the weld here, the excessive filler material standing up in the center is gonna make it more difficult to reach this crucial area that we need to here. This is how you can most commonly have problems with getting adequate penetration. Now, the second thing that most commonly happens, because we have more filler material to work with, somebody's is gonna increase the overall heat input. What this is gonna essentially do is get rid of the problem that we just talked about on the edges. We're gonna get better blending on the edges like we just talked about how we wanted to. However, take a look at what's happening now. Excessive filler material and excessive heat input is now causing our weld to become wider. And becoming wider, it is again, not gonna focus our heat input into the crucial area like we talked about. So do you see how one way or another, we're not focusing on the area we need to. So when unfortunately people try and make welds a little bigger, this is where we most commonly have problems with inadequate penetration. So here's what we're gonna do. Instead of one giant fat weld pass where we can't even really guarantee we hit this sweet spot, we're gonna break this down into a couple passes instead of one Mondo pass. So we're gonna do one weld pass. It's gonna focus specifically on the one area that we talked about being so important. This first initial pass is called a root pass. This one's gonna go down first and then we're gonna follow it later where we can then make things a little bit wider after we know the first one is good. Now when doing this first pass, we're gonna focus on our overall size and profile at the most important part of every weld. Do you know what the most important part of every weld is? If you're feeling brave, pause this video and drop the answer in the comments below. Quiz time, everybody. If you don't know, it's all good. The most important part of every weld is always the start. So taking the time to focus on things, specifically at the beginning, this is gonna require patience and doing something that I refer to called fill and chill. At the start, we're gonna focus our heat input into the most important 
important area like we talked about, which is essentially gonna be the root pass. We're gonna add a little bit of filler material at the start and we're just gonna hang out here. We're gonna be sure that we don't overfill this area and we're gonna be sure we don't overheat this area. Again, a little bit of filler, probably about three or four seconds to make sure that everything is centered and placed exactly the way we need. Not too much filler, not too much heat, and we get the great opportunity at this point to make sure everything is settled down into the most crucial areas we wanna cover for when we start moving. Doing this is absolutely imperative that we get everything placed exactly the way we need. The reason the time we take to do this at the start is then when we start moving, we don't have to do anything except just maintain as we start moving. This is something I go over with my online students literally every practice session. Take the time to do all the work at the start and then all we have to do is monitor the details of things as we move along once we start moving. Now, sometimes, like we talked about, we need to cover a bigger working area with our weld. So this is where today's awesome question comes into play here. Okay, so now that we have the root pass done and we are confident of the penetration and placement of it, it's time to do a cap. The cap will be placed over the root like this. This is how we're gonna be able to get the width that we need without having to do one giant weld. So the first way we can get this done is called a weave pass. This is essentially where we're weaving from side to side as you can see here and with adding adequate filler material, you can see I am crossing the surface from side to side, covering a larger weld area. Now again, because we are confident that the root we put in has done its job properly, we can spread this filler material across the surface and cover the overall width that we need. It's a pretty fun way to make something bigger safely. Looking at it here, you can see how it actually covers the existing root pass. And when you can get this pattern really consistent, it looks awesome. Now looking at this one, this is my personal favorite way to do this. Again, we have a proper root pass done underneath, and now I'm doing something called a split weave. It's similar to a normal weave, but we're doing it in two passes instead of one wide one. First, we're gonna fill up one half of the desired width with a single pass. This pass is gonna have adequate filler and adequate heat. And once I have filled up approximately half of it, I'm gonna go back and do a second pass. Now you can see I'm essentially filling up the second half the same as I would have with a single weave pattern. But now I'm doing this in two steps so I can fill things up completely different. Now looking at it here after the fact, you can see it has a completely different look to it. And again, this is my personal preference but I prefer doing this way. I can keep things really straight, I can keep things really consistent, but either way you do it, whether it's a weave pass like this or a split weave pass like this, this is gonna be one of the safest ways to fill up a bigger gap knowing you've done everything properly. Taking a look at a couple different approaches like this, kind of pick whichever one you like the look of best. Obviously with different job requirements and all that stuff, different rules may apply here. But the main thing is that we know we have the root covered properly. So regardless, if you're doing one giant weave pass or a couple different passes like this, we can rest assured that everything under the surface here has been taken care of properly, exactly the way we need. Take the time to set things up properly, especially at the root of what we're after here. If we take care of that, to be honest, you can kind of make things as big as you want. Again, rules rules, rules. Checking all these boxes at the most important part, at the start. We're gonna ensure that we get all the results that we want. We can cover and fill up the amount of space that we need to and get adequate heat input and penetration as well. This was a great question. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. For Pacific Arctic Welding, my name is Dusty. Phil and chill, we will talk soon. Peace.